horrific. A good percentage of the horses would be strung up um, while they're still alive, being dismembered while they're still alive. Uh, with the captive bolt, it could take seven to nine times before they're rendered unconscious. For decades, this is how horses died in the United States, killed in slaughterhouses. In 2006, slaughterhouses were shut down by Congress. Yet today, both supporters and opponents will tell you now, in some ways, things have gotten worse. Because horse slaughter didn't end, it moved. It's almost a game to some of the people that are actually doing the slaughter. What they'll do is stab them either in a main vein or main um, muscle to paralyze them and then they shackle them and pretty much dismember them alive. The sewage, the blood, the smell, the screams. Horses are now being crammed into trailers and taken over the border to slaughterhouses in Mexico and Canada. But the process still starts here. We took our cameras inside the Wilcox Livestock Auction. Riders, ranchers, and so-called killer buyers will decide the fate of these unwanted horses. It's a very scary situation for the horses. You can't tell who they are, but killer buyers are in the audience, looking for a cheap horse, as cheap as 15 cents a pound. They turn around and sell its meat for $30 a pound overseas. It's a process that's perfectly legal, yet no one seemed to be talking about who was doing it. Where are you going right now? Uh, are you working for the government? Why are we allowing our, uh, our horses to be sent across the borders to be slaughtered for human consumption abroad. The reason for some is horse slaughter is the lesser of two evils. It's pretty horrible to see an animal starve to death. Arizona Livestock Officer Jim Self finds horses abandoned in the desert every week. <coughs> There's an overpopulation of horses in the United States, and with hay prices doubling and the economy getting worse, people just can't afford to take care of them. I mean, there's so many horses around here. The people that are causing the big stink about it haven't looked at the longevity of the, of the problem. Sunny Shores, who owns the auction, says at least here, horses have a chance of getting a new life. He says more than half of the horses that come to the auction go to good homes. But now, with so much bad publicity, this will be his last day selling horses. Rancher Ed Hubbard has been training and selling horses for a living at the Wilcox auction for years. And so this eliminates my market. I sold a good horse today to a young girl to run, to run barrels. And now, I, now I've got no place else to go. But there, I promise you, before this is all said and done, this is a big problem. A very, very big problem. And the ranchers and the people that own the horses are not the bad guys. I think Congress made a mistake. It's going to get a lot worse. For some, the only way to resolve the problem humanely is to reopen slaughterhouses in the United States because at least here, they're regulated. I think horse slaughter has always been an easy out, and I don't think it's a necessity. For Pomeroy, Congress needs to keep going, making it illegal to ship horses over the border for slaughter and ending overpopulation by capping horse breeders. They're not being held responsible for any of it, and they're really the root of the problem because we are trying to help these horses. It's a horrific ending to, I think, the lives of, of animals that have really served mankind.